So tonight I'm taking you to the magic of archaeology. And uh, I usually start my lecture with the sentence that almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. The origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. The man, the Homo sapiens, the Cro-Magnons, us, we are not product of the evolution, but genetical engineering. Civilizations have not started 6,000 years back with Sumer, Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, Hittites, ancient Egypt, ancient India. That's just the last cycle of humanity. We go much, much deeper in the past. And finally, pyramids are not built by pharaohs and they are not tombs. These are the most famous Giza pyramids in Egypt. They are known as the Great Pyramid of Egypt or Cheops or Khufu Pyramid. The second largest, Kefren or Kafre. And finally, Mykerinos or Mycenaean Pyramid. Egyptologists have been saying for two centuries that they were built by the pharaohs of the fourth dynasty, roughly 4,500 years ago. We will discuss that, and we will soon learn <coughs> that there is not a single proof to confirm this hypothesis. We need to go much deeper in the past. The most important Egyptian artifact is not found in Egypt. Today, it is in Italy, in the Egyptian Museum of Torino. It is called the Turin King List. On this papyrus, which today, unfortunately, only 50% has been saved, we can see the list of all Egyptian kings, rulers, or Greek word pharaohs. However, our accounts of Egyptian pharaohs starts approximately 5,100 years ago. And the King Menem, who united Lower and Upper Egypt. And in this document, they are also mentioned, but as the last phase, the third phase. And here the rulers are called sons of gods. However, there is a phase before the last one, the second phase, which is called the era of demigods or semi-gods. They would rule Egypt hundreds of years each. And there is a first phase, which is called the era of gods, who descended from the sky, came to Egypt, and they would rule Egypt 1,000 years each in average. And the first gods, with a small g, came over 36,600 years ago. Even more important document is further to the east, to the Sumer. And it is called the Sumerian king list, where literally in the stone, all Sumerian rulers have been carved in. And the era of the first Sumerian rulers goes much deeper in the past. More than 270,000 years ago. The first rulers were also called gods. And they would rule Sumer in average 30,000 years. For example, the first ruler called Alulim 
ruled Sumer for 28,800 years. The second ruler, Alajar, ruled for 36,000 years. This was the first era, era of gods, which lasted approximately until 32,000 years back. Then something happened. Now, we know that uh, our planet has had several global catastrophes in the last 100,000 years. For example, everybody is aware about so-called big flood, biblical flood, which happened roughly 12,000 years ago. Before this one, there was another one, 18,000 years back, 32,000 years back. 55, 75,000 years back. You can hear me? Who? No? You cannot? Okay. All right. Then I'll, I'll, I'll stand here. <laughs> so she can hear me. So, <laughs> he follows me. So, in the last 100,000 years, we have had at least five big global catastrophes. Every time the catastrophe happened, more than 99% of humans would be wiped off from the face of the planet. For example, 75,000 years back, a huge volcanic eruption in Indonesia. We could not see the sky for hundreds of years. 99% of people were gone. Similar thing happened 32,000 years back. And this is the time where those gods somehow disappeared from Sumer. The first phase was over. And then the second phase came, the phase of the lesser gods. And they would rule Sumer, 23 kings, for 24,000 years, roughly 1,000 years each, exactly the same like in the ancient Egypt. And finally, we are coming to the era of the children of God. It matches Egypt and Sumer, but this is not something they teach us in schools, even though the documents exist. Let's go back to the time of the pyramids. In uh, northern Sudan, 224 Nubian pyramids. On the island of Sicily, in Italy, 43 pyramids, four-sided, plateau on the top, volcanic stones, cornerstones nicely shaped. We do not know who, when, or how. On Canary Islands, 104 pyramids. Majority of them on the biggest island of Tenerife. And again, majority of those in the town of Guimar. Four-sided pyramid, stepped in design, volcanic stones, cornerstones nicely shaped, orientation to the sunrise during the summer solstice. On the third side of Africa, eastern, the island of Mauritius, 4,000 kilometers from the African continent. Today, we can see a lot of sugarcane fields. When we go through those dense fields, we can see the stone structures. We climb the top of one of them, and we got a beautiful view of the pyramids. Four sides, plateau on the top, the same height of the step, the same width of the steps. The length of the side, 24 meters, 95 centimeters, 24, 
When I was there, I wrote a scientific report and sent it to the government of Mauritius. And I suggested that we investigate those pyramids together because there is not a single archaeological or scientific investigation. And they answered me, Dr. Osmanagic, we don't have pyramids. That, that you claim a pyramid, are just pile of rocks made by local farmers when they were clearing the area to plant the sugar plant, the sugar cane fields. Pile of rocks. This is when you take rocks and you throw them behind your back. 2495, 2495. What is the problem with them? Uh, officially, on this island, there was no people until the 15th century. And then the white Europeans started coming. Of course, white Europeans never built pyramids. So now, because of the pyramids, we need to change the history of this island. Bureaucracy doesn't like that. When I was on the island, I had a press conference. And the next day, in the biggest daily, L'Express, there was a big article with the title, The Smart Bosnian Wants to Reinvent Our History. He claims that we have pyramids, and we know very well that we don't have them. So now the question is, who to believe? The governments or our own eyes? The Mayan civilization built more than 100,000 pyramids in the countries that are known as Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize. More than 95% of their pyramids are in the jungle, forest, covered by soil and vegetation. This pyramid here in the northern Guatemalan province of Petén, in the city of Tikal, was considered the biggest, 71 meters. However, a bigger one was discovered in the city of El Mirador. But the whole city is completely covered by forest. And this is their biggest pyramid. If cleared, it would look like this. The Western Honduras, most artistic Mayan city of Copan. This is their biggest pyramid. 1979, archaeologists from Honduras and the United States were clearing the pyramid walls from the trees, because the roots were going under, destroying the steps. And they discovered that inside the pyramid there was 700 years old temple, which they named Rosalila Temple, based on its rose color. In this temple, above the entrance, Above the entrance, we can see the wheels and in between them, we can see the symbol for our solar system and symbol for the center of our galaxy, Hunabku, as the Mayan called it. And if you take a better look, those wheels are actually part of the vehicle, car. There is a body of the vehicle and the cabin, another cabin. And inside the cabin, we can see the profile of the Mayan face with a big nose and a big cheek. So what is the message carved in the rock? Are they telling us that they were somehow 
moving between our solar system and the center of our galaxy. And besides, how did they get such a vast astronomical knowledge? My PhD is about the Mayan civilization. They were having amazing astronomical knowledge. There are more than 300 pyramids in Peru. In southern Peru, in the area of Cavachi, about 40 kilometers to the south from the famous Nazca Lines. Ten years ago, Italian archaeologists told me that they discovered three pyramids. Eight years ago, when I went again, now they are saying there are 34 pyramids and they are not sure how many total. In the northern part of this beautiful country, the area of Tucume, 200 pyramids. They don't look like pyramids. Here we can see the signs of vertical erosion. But when you remove some of the desert sand, very soon, you're going to come to the walls built from the adobe bricks. When, we see, when you see such signs of vertical erosion, you know that the structure has been exposed to prolonged rains and storms. The only problem is, for last 7,000 years, in this area of Peru, the climate has been the same, dry, sunny. So when did we have those rains? 8,000, 15,000 years back? And when the pyramids were built, even before that? Officially, Peruvian history is about 3,000 years. Here, we go much deeper in the past, and we need to change that history. In the northeastern Peru, there is a largest pyramid in South America. It is called Huaca del Sol, the Pyramid of the Sun. Today, we see only one-third of the original structure, because when the Spaniards came in the 16th century, they came only with one goal, to steal the gold and silver from this part of the world. When they came here, this pyramid was so huge that they had to move the riverbed of River Moche to the pyramid, and water washed away two-thirds of the structure. But what remained is still very impressive. This equals surface of five football fields. Pyramids in uh, Bolivia, we had a wonderful complex of Acapena Pyramid. It is close to the lake of Titicaca, 4,000 meters above the sea level. Today, there is not much left. But we can see those blocks that once belonged to the pyramid. Those blocks are made from granite. Granite is one of the hardest natural materials. On the Mach scale, from 1 to 10, granite is 6.5. Iron, for example, is 5.5. Copper, 3. Very soft. Well, today, if we want to shape the granite, we use diamond tools. Diamond, number nine, on the same scale. Well, archaeologists claim that until 2,000 years back, there was only copper tools in Bolivia. Copper, inferior tool, cannot shape superior material. Some of the blocks have laser straight surfaces. And some of them were obviously machined. 
with a high precision. German-Bolivian mathematician and uh, archaeologist, Dr. Poznanski, spent 50 years of his life investigating this complex. His conclusion, it is over 15,000 years old. Now, the question, who had diamond tools, lasers, and machines 15,000 years back? And they are telling us Bolivian history, not more than 3,000 years. Northern Mexico, the town of Tula. Officially, this town is assigned to the Toltecs culture. Today, only three pyramids have been reconstructed. Volcanic stone, stepped in design. On the top of one of them, we can see eight stone columns. The Toltecs call them Atlanteans. They claim that they came to Mexico from the east and that they came from the red land. To the east from Mexico, of course, is the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Red land is volcanic soil. And sure enough, until 12,000 years back, there was a big island or small continent in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We know that geologically. A big catastrophe happened of the cosmic origin. Huge rocks were hitting this island. Since it was volcanic origin, volcanoes started working and this island sunk 3,100 meters below the sea level. And the land of Atlantis disappeared. This is the Kukulkan Pyramid in uh, eastern Mexico on Yucatan Peninsula. It is one of the most beautiful Mayan pyramids. Now, they have the staircase on all four sides. 91 stairs, 91 times 4, 364 stairs, when we add the platform on the top, 365. It matches the number of days in our solar calendar. A lot of astronomical knowledge has been incorporated here. Very similar pyramid, but 12,000 kilometers to the east in southeastern Asia, in Cambodia. The pyramid is called Koch Ker. Encyclopedias assign this pyramid to the rulers of uh, the kingdom of Cambodia from the 11th century. This pyramid has four sides. It has perfect orientation to the cardinal points east, west, north, south. I'll discuss this one a little bit later. The pyramids in China. In 1967, the Chinese archaeologist had a lecture in Japan at the conference, and he announced that more than 200 pyramids are located in the central Chinese province of Shanxi. 20 big and about 200 smaller pyramids. He also claimed that they found clay tablets with the hieroglyphic carvings. He partially deciphered those carvings, the letters, and he said that those pyramids were built 12,500 years ago. He went back to China. They put him into the mental hospital and nobody heard about him. The year is 1967, the famous year of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. 
when Mao Zedong moved millions of people to do the agriculture. If you had opinion different than mainstream scientists, you wouldn't have a good time. After that, the Chinese government decided to plant the trees on their pyramids and wanted to present them to the outside world as natural hills. Why would they do that? Officially, the Chinese history is 5,000 years old. And the history of China as one country, it is just 2,300 years old. Everything started with the Emperor Qin, who united seven Chinese provinces in blood. He started building the Great Chinese Wall. And he started with the same currency. And now, because of the pyramids, we have to change the Chinese history and go deeper in the past for 10,000 years. They don't want to do that. The Chinese archaeologists told me that they will not get permissions to dig another generation, 25 to 30 years. All their pyramids still covered by soil, bushes, vegetation. But on this model, we see if they are uncovered, we know that they are perfectly oriented, east-west, north-south, four sides. This is the picture of the most famous pyramids in Mexico. It is called the Pyramid of the Sun. In the city of pyramids, Teotihuacan, 161 years ago completely covered by soil and forest. It took 75 years for archaeologists from Mexico and the United States to completely uncover it. And this is how it looks like today. One of the most beautiful examples of the pyramid architecture. So, when you watch from the base, People who are climbing the top, they are becoming so tiny. It seems that the builders wanted to reach the sky. And really, 73 meters in height. Very impressive. Interestingly enough, the Egyptian pyramid is exactly two times bigger. The pyramids in the United States of America. They don't tell us anything about them. However, in southwestern corner of the state of Illinois, just across is St. Louis, there is a Cahokia National Park with officially 120 Cahokia mounds with more than 120 pyramids. This is the biggest one. Or the aerial view. Four-sided pyramids, four triangular faces, plateau on the top. This one here is larger in the surface for 11% than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. American archaeologists call them mounds. Mound is when you take dirt, when you take soil, earth, and then you make something. This is not mound. There are four different types of construction materials. Sandstone, pebbles, rocks, sand. And when they completed the structure, they cut the squares of grass and soil turn them upside down, and cover the pyramid. In order to build just the biggest one, they needed an equivalent of 122,000 trucks 
of the construction material. In order to build more than 120 pyramids, they needed millions and millions of tons of the material. At this site, there is a museum which was built 40 years ago. At that time, US government spent $25 million for the museum. Today, it's like $100 million. All you see in the museum are half-naked Indians that are shown as builders. Well, we know that American Indians never built permanent structures. So if they are not builders, American Indians, if white Europeans are, of course, not built, then who? We need to change American history. When I spoke to the archaeologists at the site, I asked him if they started digging, if they found tunnels, chambers, underground waters. He said, no, we cannot get the permission to dig. Western Java, Indonesia, a place called Gunung Padang, the Hill of Light. Dr. Danny Hillman discovered the pyramid in the jungle, 100 meters in height, four-sided, who originally looked something like that. Well, he was doing some geological core drilling, preliminary archaeological trenches, and then the archaeological community stopped him. Why? Because when he did radiocarbon dating, he found out that the original structure was 26,000 years old. And with that, we changed the history of the Asian continent. Israel is not just a country of monotheistic religions, but on that soil and surrounding area, Today, Syria and Lebanon and the others are finding beautiful prehistorical structures. There is a pyramid in Israel, stepped pyramid, used to be 11 story high. I calculated 2,000 tons of material, stones. Everyone is different in size nicely shaped on all six sides. Talking about the country of Israel, a beautiful site called Rujum El Hiri on what's today occupied Syrian territory in Golan Heights. Here we can see five circles. They used volcanic stones, 42,000 tons to make those circles. Until it was under Syrian government, they haven't done any serious effort to find out more about this site. Even Israelis who have excellent archaeology, they don't have the answers because there are no artifacts or the organic material that can help them date this structure. In the middle of the structure, there is a small room. You get in there, sit down, you feel perfectly safe. It's the ideal place to connect with the past through the meditation. In the last years, I have started doing focus meditation on the sites like this one here, where we don't know the answers. Asking the questions, who, when, and why. As soon as I started meditating, I was starting getting the answers. So the story goes like this. 5,200 years back, there was a settlement, a village, to the north from the stone circle. And people were getting sick 
they were getting diseases, livestock, cows also. So people talked to their shamans, the spiritual leaders, and asked them what was happening. The shamans had their ceremonies. They invited spirits of nature, and they got the answers. They were told that there was underground water stream going under the village. When water moves, it releases the energy, and that energy is not good for us humans. We can call it negative energy. If you are exposed for the longer time, you're going to get sick three years, in five years, in ten years. And the shamans were instructed exactly what to do to neutralize this negative energy. They were told to build a stone circle from energy potent material. So they found volcanic stones, volcano, old material with the iron content. They made the first circle. They neutralize negative, transforming it to the positive energy. And then, when you make concentric circles, odd number, odd number, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, when they made five circles around it, they amplify this good energy. And after that, the village started to prosper. They built another one, and another one, and another one. And the era of peace lasted for 1,000 years. And then the conquerors came, they killed the priesthood, and they forbid people to come this, to this place anymore. Now, you've heard in the last few minutes a little brief about the pyramids around the world. So we can really conclude that the world of the past was the world of pyramids. But there are so many of them, different designs, different materials, some of them uncovered, some of them covered. How do we define the pyramid? If you go to the major encyclopedias, like Encyclopedia Britannica or Columbia in the US, we will find the definition which is completely wrong. They say, pyramid, tombs for Egyptian pharaohs in Egypt, or pyramid, places to sacrifice the enemy in Mexico. They are both wrong. We need scientifically based definition. In the last 15 years, that's exactly what we have been doing in Bosnia. We were looking to the new definition of the pyramids. And we have established a set of 12 criteria, 12 elements. Element number one. Geometry. It's logical. If you want to call something a pyramid, it has to have a shape of the pyramid. In our geometry, we have three-sided pyramids, four-sided pyramids, five-sided pyramids, six, seven, and so on. But for some reason, on our planet, the four-sided pyramid is the most common. In April of 2005, I first came to the little Bosnian town of Visoko. The whole municipality, about 40,000 people. I did not come because of pyramids. I came because I wanted to visit the local museum. And then I saw this. For 25 years before that, I had been researching pyramids and ancient civilizations. As I told you, my doctorate was about the Mayan pyramids. Majority of them 
are in the jungle and the forests, covered by soil. So I was looking here. In front of me was one side, side number two, side number three, in the back, side number four. Four sides. Triangular face. One, two, three, four. I could see the corners, very visible and obvious. And it is the same slope from bottom to the top. Those four sides meet at apex, at the top. So, geometrically speaking, this is a pyramid. Or, from the air, In 2006, we started excavation. I established non-profit, non-government foundation for archaeological and digging and scientific research. And we started removing the soil from several sections of the pyramid. This is the place where two sides meet, corner. We removed one meter of soil, and look what we found. We found a structure a corner, east, north. So that was the first element, geometry. The second element, artificial construction material. Now, we know that in Peru they used adobe bricks. In Guatemala, they shaped volcanic stones. In Mexico, they used sandstone and granite. In Egypt, they used limestone and granite. And here in Bosnia, wherever we were digging, we were finding construction material. Just half a meter or one meter below the soft soil. For example, this is our first trench on the northern side. It is in our classification number 4C. So we removed one meter of soil and we found those blocks. This one is clearly rectangular, that one also. Four and a half meter long, one and a half wide, 45 centimeters thick, seven tons, 7,000 kilos. It has flat top, it has break at 90 degrees, flat side, break at 90 degrees, flat bottom. It has six flat sides. Obviously, it hasn't been made by Mother Nature, but by intelligent hands. Next to this block is another one and another one. And below the first layer of block, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. This is a structure. Nature does not construct, but intelligent hands. We took samples from these blocks, sent them to seven institutes for materials. They analyzed them and told us this was an artificially made concrete. If you have concrete, then you can determine the quality of the concrete. Beton, yes. The quality of the concrete is determined by the hardness. Harder the concrete, better the quality. It is more durable. And the second element, water absorption. 
if water can get inside the concrete during the winter, it freezes and you have ice. Ice tends to expand and concrete breaks. So the idea is to keep very low absorption of the water. Our norms today allow only 3%, up to 3%. This concrete here, only 1%. And the first element, hardness. In the 20th century, our concretes were on the scale from 1 to 60 megapascals. 60 megapascals, the best quality concrete. Made in US, made in Germany. This one here, 73. We have analyzed 50, 5, 0, 50 samples. Some of them were reaching 134 megapascals. The best quality concrete ever. So far, we have uncovered thousands of tons of this ancient concrete. What we have today, the green pyramid covered by soil, if we replace the green color with the color of the concrete, this is what we get. The pyramid in its original shape. The next element, element number three for the pyramids, is the orientation of the sides. The pyramids in China, north. Egypt, north. Peru, north. Cahokia, America, north. The best, the most precise orientation so far was the Great Pyramid of Egypt, Cheops. The error from the perfect north zero degrees, two minutes. And the Bosnian pyramid, zero degrees, zero minutes, and only 12 seconds. The most precise orientation on the planet. The next element, tunnels, passageways inside the pyramids and chambers in Egyptian pyramids, we have passageways and chambers in Chinese, Mexican, and so on. According to some geophysical scanning in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, this is the northern side, east, we have seven levels of passageways, and they are shown in different colors. For example, white color, the tunnels that they are 10 meters deep. Blue color, here's blue. They are deep 40 meters. Brown, brown, 70 meters, and so on. Seven levels, and they go like a spiral all the way to the top. The next element, tunnels under the pyramids, underground tunnels. In Egypt, at the Giza Plateau, we have at least two levels of tunnels. In China, tunnels under the pyramids, in Mexico. But in Bosnia, we have the most extensive underground tunnel network on the planet. How many of you visited the Bosnian pyramid tunnels? How many? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You were there two times? <laughs> All right, half of you. So the other half, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Element number six, water. In Egypt, River Nile. China, Mexico, always major rivers. In Bosnia, two major rivers. River Fonica. If you go back to the spring, Ancient gold mine, monatomic gold, always important element. And the second one, River Bosna, the biggest Bosnian river. And a lot of underground water flows, very important. 
The next element, sacred geometry. What is sacred geometry? Two most important numbers are elements of sacred geometry. 3.14, number pi, or number p. And number phi, 1.618. It's called golden section, or gold number. But also, some shapes are part of the sacred geometry. For example, equilateral triangle, all sides are the same. Inner angle 60 degrees. It's part of the sacred geometry. All hexagonal, six sides, sacred geometry. The ancients were using elements of sacred geometry when building the major architectural pieces. This is the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. This here is Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun from the air or looking at the front of it. If you go from the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun to the top of the second pyramid, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, 2,170 meters. From the Moon Pyramid to the Pyramid of Dragon, 2,170. From Dragon back to the Sun, 2,170. Equilateral triangle. Perfect geometrical shape, part of sacred geometry. And when you have sacred geometry, you have movement of the energies. The green triangle, sun, moon, dragon. The red triangle, pyramid of love, number four. Temple of Mother Earth, structure number five. Entrance to the tunnels and the river. Another triangle. Triangle within a triangle. Sacred geometry. Element number eight. Astronomical features. We know that in many cases, ancient builders wanted to make a replica of the sky. To our left, is a shadow of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Here, Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. Afternoon, mid-summer. Sunset. The shadow, just before the sunset, completely covers the Moon Pyramid. And the top of the shadow touches the top of the moon pyramid. In symbolical way, the builders are giving us the message. The rule of the sun and the day is over. And the rule of the night and the moon starts. Element number nine, location of the pyramids. Below the sun pyramid, a huge iron plate. Why iron? Because iron generates electromagnetic field. What the pyramid does, it pulls this field, going through underground tunnels, going through seven levels of passageways, and then through the top. It's getting much stronger. How do we know that? Because we have measured it at the base and at the top. At the top, the energy is 50 times stronger than at the base. The second form of the energy, 21 meters below the pyramid, water stream. Water moves, releases negative ions. The third element, 55 meter, another water stream. Between two streams, electrical charge is generated. Number four, we are finding a lot of quartz crystal on the pyramid in the tunnels. When electromagnetic field hits the quartz crystal, then through the piezoelectrical effect, it produces ultrasound. 
and we measure ultrasound of 28 kilohertz frequency on the pyramid. The next form of the energy, there is a way to measure so-called organ energy, which is also known as the life energy, or in Eastern traditions as a prana or chi. In contaminated cities, this energy is at the level of 25%. In the villages, 50 to 60%. In the pyramid, 100%. So, obviously, what the pyramids do, they amplify existing natural energy sources. The next element, number 10, volcanic lines. What is the volcanic line? If you have two volcanoes, you connect them with the line, it is volcanic line, very simple. But if you continue with the line, and at the end you have pyramid, then you can say the pyramid is sitting on the volcanic line. Why is that important? Volcano means lava, iron, minerals, energy. We have analyzed 75 megalithic and pyramid sites around the world, concluding that all of them are sitting on intersections of several volcanic lines. For example, the largest pyramid in Mexico is Cholula. It's sitting on 18 volcanic lines. The mentioned pyramid in Indonesia, Gunung Padang, sitting on 17 volcanic lines. Machu Picchu, which is a symbol for the strong energy, is sitting on 16 volcanic lines. And finally, the Bosnian pyramid sitting on 26 volcanic lines ancients knew what was going under the ground. They knew also that from the universe, the cosmic rays are forming so-called ley lines. They are straight lines. And in the ancient times, people were building their sacred monuments on those ley lines. They are best researched in southern England where you can see on one line many churches today before temples and before even there were some other monuments. Now, this is a picture of ley lines in the central Balkan region. This is the country of Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro, and the heart-shaped Bosnia. The red lines are ley lines. And most of those lines crossed exactly here. We blow up this map. It's here. Well, to the right is the capital city of Sarajevo. And this here is the town of Visoko. And this is exactly where the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids is located. And the last scientific elements to define the pyramids. Energy phenomena. Energy can be measured. It can be even filmed. Our friend from the UK, Dr. Harry Oldfield, developed a special camera called PIP camera. Today they are calling it updated version NEV, new energy vision camera. Through this camera, you can see energy fields that are not visible to our naked human eye. Through this camera, this is how one natural but pointy hill looks like. Above the hill, we can see those bioenergy fields. The green, the blue, the red, the green, blue. They are all horizontal. This is one village in Western Serbia, houses, and those lines, horizontal, green, blue, and red, green, blue, red, green. 
This here is a temple in uh, southern Egypt called Temple of Isis. Here's a temple. You see the lines? All horizontal. Red, rose, green, blue, green. This is one uh, pointy hill in Bavaria, southern Germany. Some people are saying Pyramid Hill. But you see those lines are all horizontal. This is a beautiful red rock in Sedona, Arizona. This one is called the Bell Rock. This is uh, my favorite place in the US, the best energy. But look at the line, this here are the clouds. Clouds, clouds, clouds. This is blue sky here showing horizontal lines. So the energy is static, does not move. This is a Nashville, Tennessee, just regular natural field with the horizontal lines. And this here is a pyramid in Egypt, the second largest, Kefren pyramid. You see those lines? All vertical. Cloud, 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 and here you can see vertical lines. What this camera does, it looks if there is an energy in this particular case going through the top, hitting photons in the space, and this is what they do. They form these vertical lines. This here is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, a structure, artificial structure. Above it, vertical lines. This is 2015. Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 2007. Vertical lines. Let's see why they are vertical. The town of Isoko at the base Here's a pyramid. Look at the red color. It's the energy. You see how the energy is getting accumulated. It's more and more. Look. Now everything is red. And this energy is getting released through the top of the pyramid, hitting those horizontal lines, and they become vertical. So the energy can flow without the obstacles. On panoramic view, the town of Isoko, hotel, we can see regular horizontal energy lines. They are typical for any ambient. But when you come to the artificial pyramidal structures, you have vertical lines. Pyramid of the sun, pyramid of love, vertical lines. So, after those 12 scientific elements, we can make a new definition of the pyramids. Today, people don't know about it. 20 or 50 years from now, our children will start learning new knowledge. So, what is the new definition of the pyramid? It's very simple. Pyramid is energy machine. Or more precisely, pyramid is energy amplifier, makes the energy strong. Two leading Russian geophysicists, Professor Havroshkin and Professor Tsiplakov, came two seasons in Bosnia researching the pyramids, and they concluded that they are artificial structures. They match Egyptian pyramids in shape, form, and seismic values. And 280 meters below the top of the Bosnian pyramids, there was a network of underground tunnels. What does the world say about the Bosnian pyramids? The most common reference today is Wikipedia. It is not scientific reference, but they are saying Bosnian pyramids are 
pseudo-archaeological claim, not even a project, promoted by the gentleman over here. The saying, after geologists, archaeologists, scientists came, analyzed the site, they concluded that these are natural hills. Okay, let's see those scientists. Of course, the most uh, known and respected one is Dr. Zahi Havas. He's been a guardian of Egyptian pyramids for the last 20 years. He never came to Bosnia. We have invited him three times. He said that blocks in Bosnia are reaching 40 tons. It's impossible that man can move 40 tons. Did he forget that the biggest block in the Kefren pyramid is 220 tons? That the obelisk in Luxor is 375 tons? And that unfinished obelisk in Aswan is 1,450 tons? 1,400? And he's saying people could not move 40 tons in Bosnia? And then he continues, he said, the Osmanagic must be hallucinating. That would be me. Two leading uh, European archaeologists, Professor Mike Hayward, director of the Council for British Archaeology, and Professor Parsinger, president of German Archaeological Institute, they accused me of the pyramid scheme, which is a cruel hoax on an unsuspecting public. So the public did not suspect what I was going to tell them, that the pyramids exist. Have they ever come to Bosnia? No. Independent researchers, Dr. Robert Schock, Boston University, no pyramids in Visoko, Osmanagic, started the project because of his future engagement in politics. This was 13 years ago, and I'm still not engaged in politics. He said, I started the project because of my desire to make money. And I think wrong with this desire. You need to make some money to live and pay bills. Well, I have a business in Houston, Texas for the last 25 years. And I'm still the biggest donor of this project. We don't receive a penny, one kruna from the Bosnian government. And finally, he said that the project was fiasco. Well, 13 years after, this fiasco has become the most active archaeological site in the world. Andrew Collins, never been in Bosnia. I'm extremely skeptical. David Hatcher, not convinced. Graham Hancock, not a good evidence of the lost civiliza civilization. Well, maybe he's right. This is not lost civilization anymore. We have discovered it. <laughs> Dr. Stewart, University of Michigan, never been to Bosnia. He that would be me. And his team have sculpted, have shaped the sides of these natural hills into something they think resembles pyramids. That we think, we don't even know what the, how the pyramid looks like. Now, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is uh, built from 20 million tons of concrete. Egyptian, 5 million, 20 million. Pyramid of the moon, dragon, shaping, laying them out. So when did we shape, when did we sculpt those sides of the natural hills? At the nights when nobody's looking? What is wrong with these people? They haven't come 
they haven't tested the samples, they haven't done lab analysis, they haven't done the radiocarbon dating, they haven't done any energy measurements. And this is science. They are not scientists. They give their opinions. It's impossible. This guy is hallucinating. He wants to make money. These are opinions. Opinions are irrelevant in science. Only scientific arguments. That's why, that's why they are irrelevant for us. Now, with the new definition of the pyramids, let's take a couple of pyramids and get them through those elements. Koch care pyramid, we mentioned it earlier. It has the shape of the pyramid. Four sides, triangular faces. The second one, artificial construction material. Shaped volcanic stone and shaped sandstone. The next one, orientation. Perfect north, south, east, west. Next, next one, passageways. Tunnel going from the top down and tunnels below. The next one, water. They did not have major river, so what they did, they made series of several lakes, dug the, the canals, water was flowing, kinetic energy. The next one, energy potent place. We have, we could see, 16 volcanic lines. In the material, volcanic stone, we have iron energy. Sandstone, quartz crystal. So now we can see that all these builders were using those elements to get energy machines. The Cheops, great pyramid of Egypt. Shape. Obviously, this is four-sided pyramid. Look at the sides. Equilateral triangle, elements of sacred geometry. The length at the base, 231 meters. Two sides, 462. Divided by height, 147. The result, 3.14. Number pi, element of sacred geometry. Underground tunnels, river, a machine. And we could see the picture of the second pyramid, Kefren, with those energy lines. This is, bless you, new definition. This project in Bosnia is different than any other in the world. Other projects, in most cases, if they are big, a lot of confidential stuff. You go to Egypt, you cannot go there. It's confidential. What you find so far is confidential. What is this? They hide the knowledge from us. They found some artifacts. They don't fit. They hide them. They found some texts much older than the history. They thought they hide them. Why? Because it's elites. Who control the history? Elites. Those who control the history control the present. Well, we said from the day one, there will be no secrets in Bosnian Pyramid Project. There will be no access for the elites. It will be open to everyone. We will allow anyone to come to join us or to work independently under two conditions. First, they do non-invasive activities so they don't come and destroy. And second, they have to share results with us so we can share them with the world. This is the only large-scale project in the world of archaeology that allows professionals and non-professionals to come and work with us, volunteers. Only in the last 10 years, we have had 3,450 volunteers from 62 countries and from six continents. They have become part of the discovery. They help us to find concrete blocks, 
to find some of the old tunnels, organic materials, artifacts. Thanks to them, we uncovered huge quantities of concrete blocks, hundreds and hundreds of tons, layers of concrete, 45 degrees all the way to the top. They are helping us with the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. Again, volunteers. This pyramid is different in design and the material. Here we can see the first terrace made from sandstone blocks. Here below, the second terrace and the third one. At the moment we started excavation on the moon pyramid, again, we got attacked by geologists from Bosnia, from Croatia, from France, from the United Kingdom, from the United States of America, from New Orleans, from Boston. They were saying, it is all natural. Natural? Blocks shaped on all six sides, six times 90 degrees, brought from the quarry, laid out exactly in one line, even the stairs, Mother Nature, or intelligent hands. From the base to the top, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, 190 meters in height. The Cheops, 147. Two largest pyramids on the planet. And not in Egypt, but in Bosnia. So it changed the history forever. Wherever we dug, and we were digging at 64 different places, we are finding terraces, pavements, rectangular structures, more terraces, steps, shaped blocks and plates, more stairs. Everywhere, proofs of huge artificial stone structure in the shape of the pyramid with the perfect orientation east, west, north, south. The top of the moon pyramid, we removed one meter of soil, we discovered the first terrace, the second one, the third, then we cut the hole to see how the profile looks like. We have a first row of blocks, 10 centimeters of clay. They used clay as a binder. Second row of blocks, 10 centimeters of clay. Third row of blocks, 10 centimeters of clay. The ancients were smart. They knew that the clay was a binder, thermal insulation, sound insulation, and it gives flexibility to the structures. In a case of the earthquake, the structure does not collapse. It plays, it dances, coming back to the original position. This is the base of the moon pyramid. Large plates, medium size, small. Large, medium, small, large, medium, small, all the way to the top. But look, here is a bigger layer of clay, smaller one. Why? Fibonacci formula, element of sacred geometry, energy movement. But geologists see clay and they say, oh, clay, it is natural sedimentation. They don't realize that, for example, more than 200 pyramids in China used clay for the construction. When the Chinese archaeologists stripped one of the pyramids from the forest and the soil, 90% was clay material. Even underground tunnels, 80% was clay, with some bricks and sandstone. How old are Bosnian pyramids? They are covered by soil and vegetation. If we can figure out the age of the soil, then we will get to the minimum age of the structure below. The science that investigates origin of soil is called pedology. In Bosnia, we have Institute for Pedology. They took samples from the Sun Pyramid, from the Moon Pyramid, and had an article 
on our, in our scientific conference in 2008, and they concluded that the age of soil is between 12 and 15,000 years, meaning the structure below the soil is even older. And then 2013, Tim Moon, New Zealand, with his band of uh, volunteers, they discovered organic material below the first layer of blocks and above the second one, like in the sandwich. Organic material, fossilized leaves. How did they get there? Well, the builders were laying out the first layer of concrete blocks, the second, the third, the wind was blowing, bringing those two leaves, and then they placed the final row of blocks. But those leaves, they are organic material. You can date them. And that's what we did. We sent them for the radio carbon dating analysis in Kiev. The age of organic material 29,200 years, plus minus 400 years. So we go back in the past for 30,000 years. As a matter of fact, this is radiocarbon date. And calibrated date, or calendar age, you need to add about 15%. So the real age of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is at least 34,000 years. They're telling us Sumerians, 6,000. Egyptian, 5,000. So we change everything. The first pyramids in Europe, the biggest on the planet, the best orientation to the north on the planet, the best quality concrete on the planet and the oldest pyramids on the planet. We need to change all the history books. We cannot just add one little paragraph at the beginning stating, oh, by the way, there are some pyramids in Bosnia. When you change the beginning of the history, everything else that followed has to be changed. PhDs, of archaeologists, historians, are not good. Professorships, not only in Bosnia, everywhere. Germany, Norway, United Kingdom, Mozambique, Mars, United States, has to be changed. So what do we do? Do we change all of that? Or do we label us pseudo-archaeologists, pseudo-scientists, boycott them, don't go there? Don't take them for serious. The only problem with those scientists is that even they themselves are starting discovering sites that are extremely old. One of them, Gobekli Tepe in eastern Turkey. Dr. Klaus Schmidt, late Dr. Klaus Schmidt from Germany from 95 until four years back, he uncovered three circles with those blocks reaching 25 tons. Obviously, they were not made by the primitive cavemen. The age, which is official now, 11,600 years. So if the British and German historians, archaeologists are saying everything is only 6,000, what happened with this 5,600 years difference? They are saying 11,000 only nomadic tribes killing the animals. When I spoke to Dr. Schmidt, he told me most probably the age is between 15 and 18,000 years. Every circle is like a Stonehenge. That's how complicated they were. And there is not only one or two or three. He told me several dozens, most probably 100 of them. He 
He died four years ago. And German Archaeological Institute, who was in charge, did not continue excavation. Interestingly enough, there's the same institute who attacked us 15 years back. In archaeology, we have five questions. What? What is this? Who? Who built it? When? How? And why? So why? What is the purpose of pyramids, especially Bosnian pyramids? Archaeologists cannot help us. Nobody teaches them about the true purpose of pyramids. Geologists, historians, anthropologists, museum curators, they have no clue. Why? Because they don't have an engineering mind. They're not the true scientists. We needed physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, people with the instruments to measure. Because when you measure, you send another team and another one, and you can prove it. Archaeology, you find the pottery. Oh, this could be 3,000 ancient Greece. They have something similar. No, 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 no. It's more like Babylonia. No, no, no. We need scientists. Physicists from Zagreb came with the instruments measuring electromagnetic fields. On the nearby hills, no anomalies. On the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, in the radius of four and a half meters, they detected and measured electromagnetic field of 28 kilohertz frequency. They got outside, no measurement. They went back inside, measurement was there. It meant this energy wasn't going left and right, but it was going up. Three months later, Serbian engineer Goran Marjanovic, he confirmed with his instrument the same frequency, 28 kilohertz. And then later, Heike Savolainen from Finland, sound engineer, he brought his instruments, he confirmed 28. Professor De Bertolis, University of Trieste, he confirmed the same frequency. When in science you have four independent teams who come at four different times, who bring their own equipment, and they all get the same results, it is called an independent scientific verification of the phenomena. Which phenomena? This here. Energy beam going through the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, four and a half meter radius, 28 kilohertz frequency, which is focused and continuous because we measure it in the spring and the summer and the fall and the winter. Mother Nature does not make hills with four sides, triangular faces, corners, perfect orientation, concrete blocks, inner passageways, underground tunnels, and with the energy beams like this one here. You have to have an energy machine. So, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is not only the biggest pyramid on the planet, but the oldest energy machine that's been working more than 30,000 years as the first perpetual motion machine on the planet. And then we measured the strength of the signal of this energy beam at the ground on the top of the pyramid, three meters higher, another three meters higher. Sometimes my hand can go for about six meters. Well, every time we lift this antenna, the signal was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. The physicist could not believe. They said, well, this is not how our technology works. Our technology knows that if the source of the energy is inside the pyramid or below the pyramid, as you move away, the signal should be getting weaker and weaker and weaker and then disappear. Let's call this Hertzian technology. But since everything is upside down in Bosnia, our pyramids work differently. You move away, signal is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 
So let's call this non-Hertzian technology. In 21st century, we don't have technology which is based on non-Hertzian waves. But the gentleman who was born only 200 kilometers to the west from Bosnian pyramids was experimenting with this technology in 1899 in his lab in Colorado Springs. And his name was Nikola Tesla. He invented a transmitter, which is today known as Tesla's coil, wrapped with a copper wire. And he was sending energy beams wirelessly from one end of his lab to another one, 18 meters away. And he was able to light up the light bulb, even if it was burned. And just before they are going to burn down his lab, because he was becoming a threat to the conventional science, he did the last experiment. He sent the energy beam to the ionosphere around our planet. This energy beam, you know, hit the ionosphere. It was getting back, reflected back to Colorado Springs. It was coming much stronger, non-Hertzian effect. And then he brought light to 10,000 homes in Colorado Springs. For the first time, one scientist from our civilizational cycle has proven that clean energy was possible, that unlimited quantities of energy were possible, that non-Hertzian phenomenon was possible, that wireless transportation of energy was possible. And finally, that free energy was possible. Have American corporations accepted this invention 120 years ago? Of course not. How will J.P. Morgan, who was financing Tesla's work, sell the free energy and make money? So J.P. Morgan cut the funds for Tesla, and with his colleagues, billionaires, he started investing in inferior Edison's technology. Hydro, thermal, now there's nuclear power plants. Spending a lot of money for the power plants, a lot of money for the transformers, a lot of money for the cables through which we lose 20 to 30% of the energy. So they can sell it to us, end users, for a lot of money. And this is called the profit economy, where less than 1% holds more than 90% of the resources of the planet. And majority of us struggle daily. But the time will come when the free energy will become accessible to all of us. And that will be the first pillar of the free society. And the second pillar will be the free flow of knowledge. Based on those two pillars, we will have society of free women and free men. Amen. Tesla built famous Wardenclyffe Tower in the state of New York. He did only a few experiments, again, lack of the money. But based on those two experiments, he concluded, I found ways to send unlimited quantities of energies, thousands of horsepowers, between two planets, regardless of their distance. And the frequency he was using to transport this energy was 28 kilohertz 
the same frequency that we measure on the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Tesla, through unsuccessful and successful experiments, got the proper frequency, and the Bosnian pyramid builders knew that more than 30,000 years back. We wanted to see how the cosmic events affect this energy beam. Some of you might remember that on July 27, 2018, we had an event called the total moon eclipse, where we had actually not just the moon, Earth, and the sun, but five planets in the line, Venus and Mars. And we did, we did measurements before the moon eclipse the results were as usual of the energy beam. And during the moon eclipse, which was 9.15 p.m., 10.30 p.m., during the moon eclipse, the signal was two times stronger, which means that the pyramids react on what's going on in the space around us. This is the Kukulkan pyramid in Mexico. Tourist from El Salvador was filming his family, and he filmed energy beam going through the top of the pyramid. That was 2009. After this, the Mexican government forbid people to climb the top. This is the pyramid of the moon in the city of Teotihuacan, Mexico. Energy beam. So obviously, there are more pyramids that are active in the world. Italian professor Paolo de Bertolus, University of Trieste, was measuring ultrasound on the top of the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia inside that energy beam. What is ultrasound? What we can hear is called sound. We hear from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Ultrasound is above 20 kilohertz. He has measured 28 kilohertz ultrasound. We cannot hear, but we can measure it. So let's hear for the first time how the pyramid speaks. I apologize if I woke up somebody. Did I wake up anyone? <laughs> the pyramid speaks. Actually, the archaeology is much more interesting than what they teach kids at the faculties. And then, September 2015, we sent a drone above the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. The most interesting result was in electrical field. We concluded that from the zero point, the top of the pyramid, electrical field four and a half meter in, dia in a radius. But then, as it is going up, this radius, this field, is getting bigger and bigger bigger. At a height of 21 meters, the radius is the biggest, the strongest. And then, coming back, being narrow again. And then again, going wider and narrower, wider and narrower. For physicists, no doubt, these were the scalar waves. Some people call them torsion fields. We call them Teslas scalar waves, because Tesla was really experiment with this type of technology. Uh, in the last 50 years, Russian theoretical physicists have concluded that the speed of scalar waves is much bigger than the speed of light. Therefore, they are ideal to transport the energy, to transport the information. 
And the second conclusion was the orientation of those scalar waves. In the morning, they were a little bit to the east. Noontime, a little bit to the south. Afternoon, a little bit to the southwest. Evening, west. And that's exactly the path of our sun. In the morning, east. In the evening, west. So it seems that the scalar waves do communicate with our sun. Does it mean that this pyramid communicates through the sun, using it as a cosmic gate with the other solar systems and the other galaxies, and that everything is connected? If this is the case, then we could have something as a cosmic internet, wireless. So the first potential purpose of pyramids is the communication device. So it took me one and a half hour to come to the first purpose of pyramids. Now imagine when you're going to ho go home, when I finish with my tenth purpose, about 2 AM. And that would be a joke. When we think about the future of humanity, it is not obviously in the way that we've been doing now. We are a highly technological society with so many bad frequencies around us. We've been destroying our mother planet. So for most people, it's already too late. But if we think about the ideal way to stay on this planet and to live in the harmony with mother planet, we need to change ourselves. Instead of getting after money, we need to combine our physical aspect with our spiritual aspect. When it comes to spirituality, when I was younger, a few decades back, they were teaching us in the school, spirituality means religious or religion. Spirituality actually has nothing to do with the religions. What is spirituality? We have five physical senses. We can touch, we can smell, we can hear, we can see. Five physical senses. But we have 30 spiritual senses. We can see other people's auric fields. We can feel the energy. We can see the chakras, how open they are. We can communicate, exchange thoughts telepathically. We can move objects with the power of our minds, telekinesis. We can even move through space and time, teleportation. So these are spiritual senses. So every one of us has the ability to develop at least some of our 30 spiritual senses. They don't teach us that in schools, at homes. If somebody has a gift to see the future, to heal somebody, people laugh at them. And they stop doing that. We have people who claim that they can access Akashic records. Akashic records, or Akasha, is a notion, an idea, that there is encyclopedia of knowledge about our planetary past and future. And there are some people who claim they can tap into that vast knowledge. They are called Akashic Record Readers. You probably heard that somebody was reading about the previous lives. Well, those are Akashic Record Readers. So now, imagine you go to the person who wants to see your previous lives your previous reincarnations. So you go, you lay on the couch, they come over you and say, oh, 2,000 years ago you were Guy Julius Caesar. You go home happy, hey, I was the biggest emperor of ancient Rome. 
then of course you find out that there are at least 10 or 20 other people who claim to be Caesar. So the problem with the spirituality is that we don't have scientific methodology. How do we verify information? This is what I try to do in one of my books, Ancient History from Behind the Veil, in which uh, I applied scientific protocols. I was talking in the first edition with six, in second edition with eight Akashic Record readers. They didn't know me. They didn't know what I was going to ask them. They didn't uh, communicate to each other. What I did, I had presentation with the 25 slides. Machu Picchu, Gobekli Tepe, Yonaguni monuments, pyramids in Egypt, Mexico, Bosnia. Always asking the same questions. Who, when, how, why? So you have my questions and six or eight answers. So now we can compare and see who is for real? Is the Akashic Record existing or not? For example, one of the questions was, what they can tell me about the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun? They've never been to Bosnian pyramids before. The first woman, Nancy, she said, they were constructed for the purpose of rejuvenation, getting younger. Reader number two, they purposely build it as the biggest because of the location. So now let's bring physical science into play. The biggest, well, yeah, we can compare location, of course, energy potent place, underground water, iron, quartz crystal. Number three, how they were built? Using vibrational techniques, vibration, they pull things up, shape them, slid them back into the place. There are 14 chambers in the pyramid because of the sacred geometry frequency. Again, what we can see and measure, distances, triangles, sacred geometry elements, frequencies. So this is how it works. Those two scientists physical and spiritual science we bring together. There is energy coming straight down. The physicists were telling us it's going up. Now she's saying going down. Well, she was the first one doing the reading. The physicist came later. Who is right? Both of them are right. The pyramid emits the energy. It's emitter. But at the same time, the pyramid is an antenna. It receives the energy. So it goes both ways. Genie, you will run into energy. It's like a beam of light, three to four meters. It was very important to them. It housed their energy power source. Diane. It was built with the help of the higher vibrational energies. They had spiritual advancement. Higher vibrational energies. We use different terms. We say inferior civilization, superior civilization. What she's saying, higher vibrational energies and lower vibrational energies. There is a connection between pyramids all over the world. Inside is energy, we know that. Something metal in the ground. We learned that three years later, iron plate. And there is something very unusual. It receives and magnifies energy. It feels, it feels like a quartz crystal. We know that also. Through our archeological digging, we discovered a lot of quartz crystal in the tunnels, on the pyramid. Last year, we purchased six properties at the base of the Pyramid of the Sun. Everywhere we were digging, we were finding white crystal. Crystal transforms the energy. Read number six. Pyramid builders came from places that had pyramids. What places? Migrated here. 
like I did here, there, to our planet, and continued the tradition. And then they left them. Pyramid energy has been uh, misused. And finally, this energy goes up beyond the stars, feeding other solar systems. I could not understand this for years until we discovered scalar waves. Indeed, our planet is connected to our sun, our solar system connected to other solar systems. They are communicating with other ones within our galaxy. Galaxies are connected. Everything is connected in the universe. And now let's go to the Bosnian underground. Not political, which is very, very developed, but archaeological. Here's the entrance to the tunnels, light blue, light blue. Here's the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, two and a half kilometers. Light blue, 280 meters below the top, exactly like the Russians told us 2007. This is how the tunnels look like. Inside, two civilizations first one who built the tunnels and the second one who closed them. Builders, 30,000 years. Those who sealed off the tunnels, 5,000 years back. So what we do, we actually remove those walls, we remove the filler material, we put the wooden support and we move towards the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. In those tunnels we discover big blocks like this one here. This one is the best known. It is K2, as we named it. It's sitting on the support plate. When you have this plate, archaeologically very important, it means somebody put the plate and then they place the block over it. We took samples, analyzed them to very sophisticated analysis, Rengen diffraction, and phased analysis. Conclusion, this was an artificial ceramic material more than 30,000 years ago. High temperature, high pressure. Then we used georadar instruments to see what is inside. They told us exactly in the middle, oval object, quartz crystal. So what we have now, 21 meters below, underground water stream. Water moves, releases the energy, activates the quartz crystal, starts working, amplifying the energy. It is surrounded by ceramic. Ceramic resonates, generating electromagnetic fields. That can be measured using our scientific instruments. We measure two frequencies, 28 kilohertz, and 7.83 hertz, very low frequency. This bigger one, 28 kilohertz, is like energy flow. It goes through the tunnels, labyrinth, labyrinth, labyrinth. The pyramid pulls this energy going through seven level of passageways and then through the top, and then we can measure it on the top also. But this is now focused energy. So the tunnels are actually feeding the pyramid. The second frequency, 7.83 hertz. In science, it is known under the name the Schumann resonance. Everything resonates in the nature. Our planet resonates at 7.83 for hundreds of years until 1990. After that, we've been producing so much bad technology. Laptops, computers, video projectors, TVs, Mobile phones, electrical grids, satellite dishes, all this bad energy going to the ionosphere, putting pressure on our mother planet, on our Gaia. And our mother planet, she started vibrating higher, 8, 10, 12, 15 hertz. Here, it's about 15 hertz right now. These are small differences from 7.8 to 15, but our body cells do recognize the difference. 
What is the difference? Well, the difference is in the stressful environment that we live in nowadays. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years ago, everything was so much more relaxed. You wake up in the morning, the day will last you forever. You have a date with your girlfriend in one hour, one hour never passes. Today, you wake up in the morning, you don't have time for anything. Stress. Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, 7.83, brings us back to balance. This particular block, K2, it has a lot of dark blue colors. High frequency. High frequency affect our spirituality. Ideal place to sit, relax, meditate, do astral projections. You open your hands above this block, you feel tingling in your fingers. You feel energy. You cannot see it, you cannot touch it, you feel it. Spiritual senses. Another block, K1, a lot of red color. Red, low frequency, penetrates our body, affecting our bloodstream. Our blood streams better, we are healthier. Healing aspect. In the tunnels, this is on the new tunnels at the time, we are always followed by those white spherical intelligences, orbs. They can be different colors. In our case, 99% white. They can be different shapes. In our case, spherical, 99% orbs. Whenever we do something, we put the wooden support, we clear the tunnels, we bring the tourist groups, always orbs want to check on us. What do we do? What our guides are saying, how the workers are doing their job. I found them very supportive and very joyful. Orbs. When Eric von Däniken visited us four years ago, the famous researcher from Switzerland, his assistant was filming me and Däniken. They're gonna bring two, one archaeologist, one geologist, who are skeptics. I said, fine, as long as you let me... You see how many orbs are flying? You can bring 20 skeptics. But just let my scientific Here. information be inside. See? see? For three days, National Geographic and see? me, we are filming inside orbs. Hundreds, hundreds of them. Walls, analysis, negative ions, all this stuff. And they said the next day, the fourth day, they don't need me. They Fun around their us. People on me. So, they brought their guys and they filmed see? only see? one scene. See? Those two guys Coming from those side tunnels. Were running out of the tunnels. See? You see how many of them? are saying, Osman Nagic is making the tunnels himself. Now, now I'm listening to myself, okay? So when they... 2010, we discovered the first chamber, 220 meters from the entrance. The chamber was filled with the material. It's too much of the light here. And when we clear it, we found out it was 50 square meters, four meters high. And we noticed when people are getting inside the tunnels, they feel good. People with asthma and respiratory problems, they start breathing so well. They go outside, they don't need air pumps for three months or for six months. This girl from Slovakia, Veronica, she had a big problem with the lung capacity. She was using only 47% of her lungs. For three years, she was trying different therapies, no help. She came in July 2015. She spent one week in the tunnels, morning, one hour, afternoon, morning, afternoon. After seven days, she went to measure again 84% the capacity of the lungs. She came back in September and she was volunteering with us, pushing the wheelbarrows. That's why we have a smile on her face. The group from uh, Prague, Czech Republic, they've done different measurements, among them the sugar in the blood, the glucose in the blood. If the glucose level is 3.2 to 6.1, it's a normal level. 6.1 to 10, higher risky group. Above 10, diabetes. 
Year G or year K before entering tunnel 7.8, a little bit higher. He came back 5.1, normal level. Karel, before 10.5, almost diabetes, he came back 5.7, normal level. This woman from Turkey, she would have very high blood pressure, reaching 220 over 135. For 10 years, very bad migraines. You can imagine, 220. The last three years, she's been coming twice a year to the tunnels. Her blood pressure never goes higher than 140 over 90. Italian doctor Simone Zoccarato, he would be measuring the red blood cells and the white blood cells before and after. He noticed that when you go to the tunnels, the energy of the tunnels melt toxin deposits. And those toxins are going to your blood and then through the blood outside liver. Otherwise, no matter how you see him, he's very fit. He works out every day in Italy. He eats healthy, drinks healthy. And then with the eating and the working out, you know, through the sweat, you remove some of the toxins, but you can never remove all of them. The pyramid energy removes those toxins. This is my blood, my blood, after the tunnels. When you have such beautiful circles, red blood cells, good condition. When they are discontinued, problem. And you see how much space they make for the white blood cells to attack the toxins and get them out of the body. A few testimonials. Can we turn it? So what was your experience? Well, the experience is very positive because I have Parkinson's disease and I'm totally relaxed, no stress, no tremor, full of energy, absolutely not anymore uh, non... Uh, has, uh, has had Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's. Twelve years ago, his son died. He had a huge stress. And then he started tremoring. And then the disease, as we know, there is no cure for Parkinson's disease. It was getting worse and worse. Eventually, he could not drive the car. He could not write. He could not smile. Twice he was coming to the tunnels, and you could see him. No tremor no more. This woman from uh, Belgium, last January, she was in the wheelchair for five years, for five years. Hello. Then she was... Uh, the Birgit from Belgium? The Birgit was using the pyramid water. So we have in some of the tunnels water, which we bottle, and then what people do, they mix the water, one cap, with one liter of regular water, wait for a few hours, and then they drink it. So with one little bottle, 25 liters. So she was drinking it for several months. Um, last year, in uh, December, and also in January still, I was still in a wheelchair. Um, my uh, symptoms were like, my, all my muscles were very stiff, all my body, so I couldn't walk anymore. Um, and in September last year, I was at a fair in Belgium where I met Tom. And, so um, you did the, uh, get diagnosis? Yes, of fibromyalgia. Yes, yeah, fibromyalgia and also stiff person syndrome. Yes. And um, then I started drinking the pyramid water because it sells it in Holland and Belgium. And um, in a few weeks, I could really see improvement. I could start to make steps. June was the first time I came to the pyramids and I experienced the energy and everything. And I climbed the pyramid of the sun in June when I, in January, still was in a wheelchair, so I always... Pyramid on the planet. Andreas from Austria, he 
he had the prostate cancer. Had the health issue, said that you had the high blood pressure, hypertension yes. Yes. issue, and that uh, you had a uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. And then, can you uh, tell us something? What did help you to uh, improve your symptoms? I think uh, my help is I uh, going inside the tunnels, the Rafne tunnels, and the last two months I drinking the water from the pyramid. I married this with uh, a small pyramid water with one liter normal steel water in a glass bottle and then I uh, parking one hour, uh, 24 hours in the fridge and then I, I drink one liter or a half liter all day and after two months I, 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 I have no tumor. It's, it's so, it's so. It's unbelievable. Can, it is unbelievable. And, and the doctor in Vienna is, 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 is one of the best uh, uh, urologen from, from Vienna. He works in the, in the uh, hospitality and private. And he, say, he cannot say why it's gone, the tumor, and, and, and why it's the, 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 the heart pressure has gone down. This is, is unbelievable. I don't know. Thank you very much. No. Hello, I'm Andrea. And I'm a mother of Leonard. Uh, we are from Slovakia. Uh, Leonard was born in 36 weeks prematurely. Mm, he has some diseases. He has um, cleft palate, um, some diseases with leg. He has hypotomy, which is muscle disease. And um, his uh, psychomotoric skills are delayed. Uh, all of these diseases are recommended with um, metabolic syndrome. Okay, thank you. What, wh when uh, did you come first time and uh, how much time you spent in the tunnel and what's uh, the improvement? You okay. said something about uh, improvement. Okay. Uh, the, for the first time we were here in April this year. Okay. Leonard was 13 months old, okay. but, his, um, but he was on level of three or four months old child mm, and we okay. spend in tunnel four, uh, eight times okay and um, when we came home Leonard uh, started to be more strong he started eat more and he spoke in syllables uh, he spelled some letters before please tell me your name where you're from and uh, what was your uh, health issue and how you feel now after spending time inside of the tunnel. Okay, my name is Herbert de Keukelere. I'm from uh, Belgium, from the Dutch, uh, the Flemish speaking part. And uh, my uh, health issue was that I was last year getting blind. I only had the nice side left of left and right, uh, almost 30% only. And uh, since one year, I'm using the water out of the tunnels and I'm meditating with one of the stones that I got, the Bosnian crystal that I uh, got here through a friend and I used to start to meditate on my heart with it and now one year later almost uh, I'm on 90 percent recovery here so from 30 till 90 and on my right eyesight I was on 80 before I came here uh, early this week but since yesterday and today uh, this eye is feeling a little bit improvement as well but this one has got improved a lot uh, the past uh, week so here I am I think around 90 percent uh, for the moment and uh, the sensibility of my eye has been getting better as well normally I have to with a situation like this with uh, the, uh, the light I have to wear my glasses so I don't have to uh, at this uh, very moment. So that's, that's also uh, already an improvement. So everything uh, you can confirm is uh, an improvement of your symptoms after spending the time in the tunnel and uh, using drink. the water from yeah, the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to admit, <laughs> my level of energy is very, very high and my feelings, my, my, uh, uh, my jaw, physical level, energy level, spiritual level, 
the auric field. We used Professor Korotkov's BioVel instruments. These are some of the cases. The blue field should be our auric field, our aura. If it is continuous, it's good. This one is not continuous. You see how many discontinuation? But it's not too bad. This one is worse. This one is bad. And this one is very, very bad. Ad yeah, it's a similar principle. Killian photography. Killian photography is 70, 80 years old already. This is my case before the tunnels. This side, not too bad. Here, this continuation, they told me potential blood circulation problem. I spent one hour in the tunnels, came back. Much better. No problem here. The chakra systems. We have seven chakras on the physical body. And this person has actually very good balanced chakras. The perfect is if they are on one line. But this is very good. Because we've seen some of the chakras like here or there or there. This is rather good. But they are rather small. This was before the tunnels and this was after. You see how the chakras got much bigger. They're much more open. So energy flow is better. And this energy affects everything physical and spiritual and energy level. This is one person from Bosnia. This is from 2017, August. Before, very bad. This is 2.28, this is 4 o'clock after one hour. Beautiful. Energy 23 joules. Energy level 58 joules. One visit only. Now, sometimes one visit can show remarkable results. Like this guy with the Parkinson's, it was amazing. I've seen several other people with Parkinson's disease. There is a guy, he's also Bosnian. He got retired in the US, he came back, tremoring, he had pains everywhere. But it was slow progress. He was going for a month, and I was talking to him. I could see that, you know, he's not tremoring like before. It's still, but not as strong as before. I spoke to him. He said when he came, he had pains in his knees. That pain is gone. He had pain in his back. That pain was not gone. So it goes step by step. Everybody is different. Results are different. But we always say, we, we actually don't do healing. We don't give any medical guarantees. But we share those testimonials. Because if it can help to someone, then we share it. And we always look for the scientific explanations. So what's happening in the tunnels? First, what we can measure, pyramid energies, the best electromagnetic field, the best ultrasound frequency, 28 kilohertz. That's the frequency of the levitation. That's why many people feel light inside. Light, not heavy. And the third one is Schumann resonance, 7.83. Number four, negative ions. Medical science knows that negative ions are very good for us. They clear the atmosphere from the dust. They raise the level of oxygen in our body and they kill viruses and bacteria. More negative ions, better for us. Here, 100 negative ions. You go outside, 500. You go by the river, 7, 800. You go to the forest, 1,000. In the Bosnian pyramid tunnels, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. So much more. The next thing, we live on the surface of the planet. We like it, it's romantic, but a lot of cosmic radiations coming our way. Some of them are harmful for our body. And our body cells fight those radiations. In the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, no bad cosmic radiations. The next thing, natural radioactivity. It is coming from the underground. Sometimes we walk on the street, it's hitting us. We are not even aware of it. Our body cells fight cosmic radiations, fight radioactivity. 
24 hours a day they are busy fighting the enemies. The next enemy becoming the worse. The mobile phones, 5G network, before using mobile phone and after. We are burning our brain cells with the mobile phones and with the Wi-Fi network, also coming to 5G. Used to be 3, 1G, 1979, 2G, 1988, 3G, 1998, 4G, 2008, Last year, they started implementing 2018 5G. So bad that uh, it's going to affect everything. Not only our spiritual abilities, they are almost cut off completely, but our mental abilities. Well, in the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, no Wi-Fi signal and no mobile phone signals. So really, Getting inside the Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, for the first time in our life, we don't have enemies hitting on us. So the body cells are free to do their jobs. What is their job? To fix the problems in our body. To start the regeneration process. To start the self-healing process. And if we are lucky to start the rejuvenation process, reverse, getting younger instead of older, that might explain this case from the last week. We had this cute 85-year-old lady coming to the tunnels. She spent one hour in Bosnian Pyramid Tunnels, and then she came back, and we got her photo again. Yes. <laughs> we mentioned the water. We are finding some tunnels with the water. Crystal clear. Now, that would be a joke. <laughs> I don't give guarantee for the rejuvenation process. Crystal clear water. We did analysis, chemical, microbiological. It's nice, it's clean, it's healthy. We sent samples to Dr. Masaru Emoto from Japan who became very popular, freezing the water, different samples, minus 20 degrees, and then taking the photo with electronic microscope. This is the water from uh, New York City, tap water, city water. City water you can drink because there are no viruses, bacteria. Why not? Because they put chlorine, and chlorine is a poison. So we drink poison. In the water that we drink, there are fluorides, poisons. In the water that we drink, there are traces of heavy metals. But when you read the label, they will never tell you there are fluorides, there are traces of heavy metals. So this water has no structure. Energetically, dead. This is the water from the dam in Japan. Going through those machines, looking fine on the surface, green color, on molecular level, look how ugly it looks like. This is the water from largest fresh lake, freshwater lake in Japan. It's Lake Biwa. This is satellite photo. Beautiful blue color, but it's contaminated. On molecular level, looks like this. This is city water in the town of Visoko, where the pyramids are. But city water, chlorine, fluorides, look how ugly the structure it is. And this is the pyramid water. So we sent samples by air to Japan, rentgens, all other mach X-ray machines, but still it kept hexagonal structures, hexagonal. That's the most powerful geometrical shape when it comes to the energy. And the beautiful crystal structure. This is energetically alive. This is a happy water. It vibrates high. And everything in our life is about the vibration. When we hate, we vibrate low. 
When we are violent, we vibrate low. When we are jealous, we vibrate low. When we have love for the whole planet, we vibrate high. Everything in our life is about vibration. You drink the pyramid water. This was before. And this person is Konstantin Korotko, professor himself, who designed this machine. Very good balance, but rather small. After the water, you see how much bigger they become. This here is a heart chakra. When it comes to this side, it means you open your heart to the whole world. In the last 15 years, this project started changing the image of Bosnia. 1992-95, war in Bosnia, violence, negative news. With this project, Bosnia is becoming the country of archaeology, pyramids, researchers, tourists, volunteers, positive news. Malaysian laying on the pyramid of the sun, getting charged with the pyramid energy. Volunteers, our website, they come June, July, August, September, October, during the summer month. First day, you see 40, 50 volunteers. We show them the pyramids. Then show them Bosnia and the beauty of the country. It's a beautiful country, really, in southern Europe. Megalithic sites, waterfalls. And then we built a beautiful park next to the tunnels. In the last three years, I purchased 55,000 square meters of land, which was swamp, neglected, muddy, a lot of trash. We cleaned everything, made it beautiful in the park, with the stone circles, with the botanical gardens, water fountains, megaliths, concerts, meditations. And after that, we give our volunteers tools in their hands. So they start working with us, removing the soil from the sun pyramid, clearing the tunnels, becoming a part of history. So when we think about the future of archaeology and science and humanity, it is not in a closed-minded people who don't share information with elite science who control us. It is in open-minded people who share the knowledge and information and have smiles on their faces. Thank you very much. Thank you.